So I tell you all the time that I give you a lot of data that's coming from my perch, right? So I sit here in a studio here in Southern California. I get all kinds of national data. I get some local data. But what really matters to you is what's happening in your neighborhood. And for that, we bring in the local professionals. Jessica Warren is with us. Good morning. Good morning. So what area do you what area do you work in? I am in the inland, inland IE. I should say IE. So apparently I cannot say inland very okay, well. Inland Empire. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I, my office is out of Palm Springs. Palm Springs. Yes. That's a nice area to be out of. It's a very nice area. Of course, in, in August is a good area to be away from. It's been very warm. <laughs> so kind of common. Okay. So yes. Ah, so Palm Springs area. Yes. Okay. So that is well, how's the market in the Palm Springs area? It's different than it is anywhere else. So although I am a Inland Empire native, um, Palm Springs market is a little bit different. There's there's a lot of cash in Palm Springs, and there's a lot of part time buyers. Part time buyers. Yeah. So we're coming up to our season right now, okay. which is when we get the snowbirds. From okay. Canada, Washington, Oregon, uh, they're about to come back. They're about to flock <laughs> back, and uh, this is when we start to amp up our our selling in the in the desert area. Is it so? If this is when you start to amp up the selling. Does that mean that if I were if I wanted to buy a house out in the desert as a buyer, I'd want to be doing it in in like. June, July, August would I be? Would that be a better time to buy? Being that's when people are leaving. People I'm a are, contrarian. <laughs> <laughs> people usually leave around uh, May. Okay, but because summer came so late this year, and we were actually pretty busy until about July. Till July, okay. Mm -hmm. and, and and so is it a lot of second homes or is yes, it primary? Yes, they're mostly second homes. Okay, so it's a ghost town during the summer. When it's 120 degrees, it should be a ghost town. Yeah, <laughs> I would imagine. Yes. That's when you get a lot of bachelorette parties and bachelor parties. That's when those start happening. Yeah, I bet that that's not the excitement of, of the area. No. So is, is, is that one of the areas that they're trying to push out the short-term rentals? So you can't – actually, a lot of the cities out there, you cannot do short-term rentals anymore or you're on a wait list. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. So is that for a business license or something? I mean, what, what are you on a wait list for? To so somebody has to exit the short term. Oh, okay. To be able to gain that license, so they're out of licenses basically. Ah, okay. So now Palm Springs has been around there; it's forever. I mean, as you go further east in the valley, that seems like it's a little bit newer. And and you know, when I when I was growing up a hundred years ago, you know, going to India was like a, a an overnight stay. You had to plan that a month in advance. It's definitely building. Yeah, it's, so is is Palm Springs rebuilding? Are are are, are they taking it and modernizing? I mean, because it's been there, you know. When I was growing up, we went. The adults all went to Palm Springs because there was nothing to do and they could relax. This is true. Is this it still is that true. way? Did you know that Palm Springs was actually created by Hollywood? Because back in the day, um, when you were contracted at any one of the studios in L.A. You could, they were in their contract, you could only be 100 miles away from that particular studio. So Palm Springs is exactly 99 miles, the center of Palm Springs. Oh, wow. So all those homes that are in like the movie district, the, the really iconic uh, homes are exactly 99 miles away from LA. So that's why there was the, the eastern part of the valley wasn't even developed. Yet. Correct. Interesting. I never knew that. Yes. And, you know, a lot of people say you live in the desert where you're getting your water. It's still true to this day, but it's definitely building. The, it's the Coachella Valley is building. And Indio and Desert Hot Springs are very affordable to live. Okay. Whereas Palm Springs is and, and Palm Desert, Indian Wells, La Quinta, not as affordable to, you know. Well, we know why the des Desert Hot Springs is so affordable. Well, <laughs> they've got their own issues there. They they do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but the other ones. I mean, I, I love the desert, so we we spend a lot of time in La Quinta and and Palm Desert. So I don't, I don't think it's probably been ten years or fifteen. May, well, maybe not. It's been a long time since I've gone to Palm Springs. Now it's kind of like two different communities. It's an experience, okay. is what I like to call it. So I have two offices. I have an office in Rancho Mirage. And I have an office in Palm Springs. My office in Rancher Mirage is a lot more conservative. Um, 
and my office in Palm Springs is 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 fun. It's just fun. Interesting. We, yeah, we're right there in the heart of it all. And I love going to that office, especially during our peak season, because I'll walk down the street and just talk to people. Interesting. And they're they're never from Palm Springs. They're always from a different part of the um, either the country or the world. Now I had agents that I've talked to and people I've spoken with yes. that said on the eastern part of the valley that there's a lot more year round. Um, yes. So Palm Springs doesn't have that. No, Palm Springs is a destination. Interesting. Yes. Are there a lot of resorts in Palm Springs? Absolutely. Okay. And I'm pretty sure the whole Coachella Valley has more golf courses than the entire nation. But I, I, I'm not, don't quote me on that. But every turn, every turn you take, there's another golf course. Yeah, I, there, I can't imagine how there can be that many people golfing as with as many courses there are. In the winter time, there is because it's 75 degrees. It's beautiful. Yeah, and it's certainly not that way in Canada. No, it's definitely not that way in Canada. <laughs> Interesting. So are people actually able to buy a house then? Or is, I mean, is, is everything gone? Is it is it multiple offers still? Um, it depends on the property and okay. it depends on the price. So if you price your house correctly, you're going to get multiple offers. And it's very strange. Like you could have a $1.5 million house sit there for months and then a $3 million house hits the market and it's gone in 30 seconds. Really? It's, it's, I, that's pretty fascinating. I'm still, I've only been out there for eight months, nine months now, um, with Keller Williams and I'm learning still, but it's what I'm watching. Interesting. So where'd you come from then? Redlands. Redlands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most of my business is in Redlands. Well, okay. So you get to do a little traveling or yes, driving. I do, but I don't mind because it's the opposite direction of traffic. Sure. So it takes me 45 minutes to get to the Palm Springs office and less than an hour to get to Rancho Mirage office. And I listen to podcasts the whole time, or I just call past clients. We love people that listen to podcasts. Yes. Continue our conversation. We're speaking this morning. Jessica Warren is with us. Transplant. Yeah. Moving from Redlands to Palm Springs, Rancho Mirage. Yes, I guess you're right. But I grew up and I was born and raised in California. There we go. Okay. <laughs> there's not a whole lot of us around that have done that. No, this is true. I, I mean, I, I, I'm my wife kids me because I've lived in two zip codes, both of them Anaheim. So I haven't moved a whole heck. Well, I did. Chapman doesn't count because I was only there for a year and I was in school. But we like going out to your neck of the woods. We love going out to the Coachella Valley. It's very nice out there. There's been, of course, was it last year, year before last, when it was 120 in May, something like that. It okay. Was, it was, it was a, it was a challenge. I experienced my first 120. It was actually 118, like about a month ago. I'm not sure there's a whole lot of difference. No, I'm pretty sure there's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you got to make sure that you're uh, staying in the water, and it's hard to go work that way. It is hard. Well, I work in an office, so I mean, I'm a productivity coach. I assist okay. the office so um i don't really have to leave the office well, that's very nice. often that's, that's so that i get there you know in the morning and i leave at five or six p.m so are you when you're in the coachella valley i mean there's, there's you know there's like a lot of have and have nots in the valley yes you know, you've got a big disparity you mentioned in the last segment about you know it, may, it might take a little longer to sell a one and a half million versus a three million yes are they is it are they financing or not financing so I would say through my office, this is just my experience, that from our office, I would put us at about 85% cash. 85%? Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. That's amazing. Yes, it is. That's why I said there, there's, a, there's just a lot of money out there. Well, you know, I understand that part. And in the last year and a half, I could, could uh, certainly understand people using cash, but you know, when you got a, an opportunity before that of getting a three or four percent mortgage, you would think that somebody that has a million and a half, two, three million dollars could find something that can get them more of a return than a three or four percent mortgage. I, agreed. Right. Agreed. I mean, but a lot, and you know, we do have a lot of people that come from LA as well. Okay. So they're they're cashing out in LA, and you know, a lot of people still work remote. Are you still seeing a lot of that? Yes, we are. Okay. Um, so the this interest rates then doesn't really have a whole lot of bearing on what's going on out there. Except for the single family resident, you know, the mom and dad with the kids that are the full time you know, full timers. Yes, like the Cathedral City, uh, Indio. Okay. Yes, in those areas you do still see, and they're even though they're 
selling at a probably a faster rate than other places um, is still taking, I mean, 7% to, that's a tough pill to swallow, but it's better than paying 100% for rent. That's for sure. I wonder what they're going to say when we get to 8%. Well, <laughs> let's just hope we don't get to 8%. Yeah, that, that'd maybe, be nice. Maybe you could tell us when that's going to not happen. Yeah, well, unfortunately, <laughs> we seem to be heading that direction, right? It's, 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 aren't we back to the interest rates where we were back in uh, December? Weren't we at yeah. like 7.2, yep, 7.5? Yep. Yeah, when you when you really look at the charts and and we've shared them that you know we did we were we didn't get all the way up to seven point five but you know we were we were way up there yes you know when we had been sitting in a range for quite a while and that range I think we might have broken out of it a little bit now but the bottom line is I mean what are you seeing though Do you, is it holding people back or are they still saying you know something I'm getting married I I have to buy anyway um, I so like the clients that I work with out there that do have, you know, they do have the families and they work the nine to five jobs. When we were at 6.6, three weeks ago, I was like, we need to buy something now. Cause okay. I was, I was excited at 6.6. Sure. And then on Friday when uh, we got quoted at 7.2 or 7.1, it was something like that. I was like, what happened in three weeks? Sure. What happened? Cause I do a lot of listings, but I do, I do um, cater to my buyers as well. So it mean it lessens their buying power. Sure. Or it makes their their mortgage a lot higher. But the way I look at it is just don't drink Starbucks for a month. Yeah, that's that that's, that's that'll help, right? <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah. that'll save you probably five hundred dollars. Yeah, I think my son has a twenty dollar a day habit. So it's uh it's crazy. It is crazy. So and you know, if you could really just cuts some fat somewhere else and you still we don't talk about fat on Ron's oh radio, i'm sorry <laughs> Gee, oh man holy cow okay so you're yeah. right i mean you have to watch that budget you do have to watch your budget and and like i always you're not marrying the rate you're marrying the house sure you're dating the rate so one of the things and i i alluded to it in the in the uh real-time real estate segment yesterday i spent some time one of the great uh uh, educators in real estate, in my opinion, Steve Harney. I don't know if you've dealt with him or not, but Steve had this conversation and there's a lot of opportunities out there. I, I did a uh, consultation yesterday on a $2.4 million house that fell out of escrow. Okay. And the problem was, is just as you said, interest rates. Now, right after it falls out of escrow, the seller decides to lower the price by a boatload. If they had done that initially and talked to a lender, the interest rate could have been brought down to 5.875, 30 years fixed. You wondered, are you seeing that out in the Coachella Valley where people are helping that way? Yes. Okay. Like I said, in the the areas where you still have the working families, yes. Right. Now, Palms, like as Palm Springs is a completely different. Yeah, they don't care because they're that's paying a, cash. That's a completely different monster. It is a destination. It's an experience. They're paying cash. Uh, yes, you are st you're still seeing the buy downs. Okay. Yes. So when when you're paying cash, are the people just is, is it hard to get the property? Or is it multiple offers? It depends on the property where it's located. Really? I mean, people they want the iconic areas of Palm Springs. Okay. Um, and if there's houses for sale in those areas, then you're definitely going to see multiple offers. You have to really you have to really uh, have have a, a strategy to win that. Correct. Correct. What's a, what is is it? Don't give us a secret sauce. Well, maybe we want the secret sauce. How do you get those offers accepted? I I like to call the agent. I like to like build that rapport, and I always have the lend. Well, if there is a lender involved, have the lender call too. Okay. So, but you gotta. I always ask. I'm like, just give it to me straight. I don't don't beat around the bush. Like, what do I have to do to win this property? Sure. Because I hate it when you. Well, you just have to be around this. Just tell me how it is. Because, and if we could do it, then we're going to do it, but don't, I'm not going to waste your time. You don't waste my time. And let's just do the best for both of our clients. They really want it. What do we have to do? So you've got a refreshing approach because there's not a whole lot of folks, although the ones that are the most successful that come in here, I find actually pick up a phone. Yes. Right? You have it's to not call the them. texting. It's not the emailing. It's not the courier pigeon, right? Pick up a phone and, and maybe it's, they just want to stay there until the end of the season. And that's how you win the offer. Exactly. But you don't know that by a text message or check your email. I just sent you a. No, it's 
we have lost we have lost so much personal personal touch in our society like picking up a phone or writing a I write letters too. I write thank you cards to everybody I do business with. Wow. Thanking them for the, you know, the transaction. Or if I go on a listing appointment, I'll immediately send them a thank you card for taking time out of their day and even like calling me to begin with. Sure. So I get a lot of business because of personal touches. Sounds like old school. Yes. It also sounds like being a human. Oh, isn't that crazy? Yeah, We're amazing. not stuck behind a screen? Yeah, stuck behind a screen, uh, not talking to anybody yeah. other than ourselves and, and listening to the echo chamber news and all that kind of dumb Ex stuff. Exactly. It's amazing how that seems to, to, especially in the tougher times, it's really the person that has the expertise and, and experience that realizes, and maybe I think in real estate, like in mortgage, I think as, as you know, there's the, the volume drops, I don't think anybody's going to question... You can question why the volumes dropped, but we all know the volumes dropped. I it, mean, that, that part you can't argue. Exactly. The It's going to wash out a lot of people that are, don't know what they're doing. Yes, I agree. And I'm, I'm all for it. Absolutely. You, let's go. But you're the coach, though. So you've got to, you're trying to teach these people to do it the right way. I am. And sometimes I don't like what I have to say. That's okay. And I keep them accountable. And I'm a little bit of a hard nose when it comes to that. And if you're going to take my time and I'm going to help you, grow your business and you better be taking time to grow your own business. Yeah. Do what you're told or, or get out of the way. Or just don't come back to my office. There you go. That, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Continue our conversation. We're chatting this morning. Jessica Warren is with us. We're chatting about real estate, Inland Empire and the Coachella Valley. Are those two different places? Yes, very okay. much so. So I know you hear, you know, cause I know that the Coachella Valley is part of Riverside County. It is. It's actually how I got to start doing business out there with some goofy lender that didn't know that, that, that the lending limits are different in Riverside County versus Orange County. How do you not know that when that's your business? Okay. Uh, I, was, that, I was kind of thankful that he was an idiot. Uh -huh. So it helped, helped me get business out there. But I, you would think that someone would know that, right? I mean, if that's basic. your, what you do for a living. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it would probably be like being not knowing the difference between a four bedroom house and a three bedroom house. I right? think it'd be realtor. identical to the exact same thing. <laughs> right. I mean, it's uh, kind of crazy, but that's the way it is. So, and that's why I asked you because there's, you know, you look and you say Inland Empire, okay, Riverside County, Coachella Valley, Riverside County, mm -hmm. big difference in, in the markets. It is, yes. So when you when I'm used to working in like Redland, San Bernardino, Highland, Riverside, um, sit the city of Riverside, it, they're working families, right? Right. And then you go to the Coachella Valley and you have these pockets where, like Indian Wells, for instance, is a it's my dream to live in Indian Wells, but it's also extremely expensive to live in Indian Wells. Sure. But there it's but their HOAs are usually a lot lower. Yeah, well, when you're <laughs> spending four or five million dollars for a house, and I guess that I, makes sense. I hope their HOA is a lot lower. Um it you'll see a lot of cash out there versus, you know, like Cathedral City, Indio, uh, those those types of areas. So with all, all that desert. equity out there. I would certainly think that even if we, there's some people I'm, I'm hearing now starting to say that we might get into a market crash. Yeah. I don't know that that's so or not, but if you've got, if you've got a lot of cash buyer or mm -hmm. cash owners, no, no loans, I don't think you're going to see a, a crash. And those people have no, no uh, motivation to sell. They don't have motivation to sell because they have those 3% interest rates. Correct. Right. Yes. So unless they have to sell, like the people that are purchasing Right now, in my experience, what in my world, are people that actually have to move. Okay. Um, divorces. I have relocations, and people that just are they they just have to upgrade or downsize because of what you know empty nesters, or I uh, for instance I have one that, you know they're gaining kids because you know their children are 20 years old and they can't move out so the girlfriend or boyfriend are moving in with them so now they need more space that does not sound like fun no i don't think i would like doing that <laughs> at all yeah so Do you get a lot is the relocation when you talk about is that in or out of the valley out of state they're relocating out of they're leaving the state mm -hmm. correct okay that's an interesting one so are those people uh, are they with loans, without loans? Are they? They're with loans. Okay, so they're so they're they're giving up that low interest rate loan to go and buy something somewhere else, maybe for cash. It's well, yeah. I mean, you're California rich. Okay. <laughs> when you leave California, yeah, so when sense. you're like, for instance, when you're going to Oklahoma 
and you are making three, four, five hundred thousand dollars on your house, and you're buying the state pretty much <laughs> for three or four thousand dollars. Yeah, so it's you've got your own city. You just uh, now, now you're the mayor and the sheriff. Exactly, exactly. But it's really hard to move back into California at that point. So when you leave California, you got to be certain that you are not planning on coming back. How do you consult people? I mean, I, I know what I tell people is to to keep that California property for a year or two. I tell people if you don't have to sell, don't sell. So because who's manage the property then? A property management company. Okay, so you have those you can recommend. I, yes, I have plenty that I can re recommend. Um, but real estate is king. You oh. know, I mean, uh, people, the most wealthiest people in this world, are because they because of real estate. Sure. And if you do not have to sell, don't sell. Buy something else. So you don't see a crash coming. I don't personally because our, our our supply and demand, we have zero supply and we have very high demand still. Even with these interest rates, we're, we still have a demand. Um, I don't see it. You look at the, there's not, the, notice the defaults are not as prominent as they used to be. Sure, they're way down. It, yeah, they're they're down. I, and I know we had mentioned uh, talking about the credit cards and I get that, but they could always sell the house, pay off their credit cards and either... There's not rentals either, so I don't know where exactly they're going to go. Um, but there's still moving. There, there's still people moving. There's I love it when people come up with it, when you make a comment like that. That gives me the ability of telling Josh. We got through RSR three PCT Loan dot com, RSR three PCT PCT Loan dot com, and it basically says, "Hey, sell your house now. You don't have to use all of your equity to buy the new house, but pay off all your debts." Uh -huh. And you still have enough enough of money left over to go buy a new house. Correct. Right. So you still can buy something, and and even at the higher interest rates, you're still got a good financial investment. And you could just refinance too once those interest rates decide to you know calm some down. Point in time, yeah. At some point in time, <laughs> who knows when that's going to happen? But I it's, mean, but it's gonna, we're not going to keep going up forever. They think we have a crystal ball, and you know, we're going to figure it out for them. But I'm still the one that that. I got my first loan at 18%. So, But you also probably bought the house for $13,000. It wasn't quite that cheap. Okay. It was still about like 180, <laughs> 190, but, but you know, something it's still at, at 18%. We were happy to get it. Yeah. Right. So, so now you're talking seven, 8% or if you get some seller helping, um, you know, and we've talked about the appraisal gap program that we have. So you're able to still get, you know, a seven or 8%. And, and like you said, refinance it down, take some equity out and buy another one. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I don't know how many people we've talked to. I mean, I would imagine you've done the same thing where you get a 25 or 30 year old and you say, OK, well, we're going to show you how to retire by 45 just by buying more property. Yes. Right. It, real estate. That's where it's at. Yeah. You can just keep on doing that. and You've got that passive income coming in. Exactly. You might have to work a little bit for it. Now you mentioned something during the last break that maybe we have. Oh, I didn't hit my button there. We have a <laughs> couple seconds to explore. <laughs> But fixing up uh, sweat equity, right? So you said you've you've uh, flipped some houses. I have flipped houses. So so that so you're able to help other people with the kind of visualizing what something could be. Yes, I like to take an ugly house and make it pretty, okay. and, it, and it's and it's good for the community. It's good for the neighborhood, and I'm taking a house that is not financeable and making it financeable. Interesting. Yes. How do you do that? You have to buy the house cash. Okay. And then, um, although I could probably do it myself, I never did. Um, but I hire the right contractors and they did, I mean, 28 days turnaround usually. Nice. Yes. Okay. Yes. So just the other ways, part of that all has to do with, if you haven't thought about it, you have to hire an experienced real estate agent, right? Because you look at something and, and, Someone will look at it and make the comment, okay, maybe we can't do this, but you, maybe you can. And there are, there are opportunities out there when you hire the right people who have the right vision, who know the right people, you might be able to make, uh, what do they call it, lemonade out of lemons. Yes. Right? I, I am always the girl that's the half gl the glass is half full. Great, great thought. If you want to meet Jessica Warren, I'll give, you, give me a call at 800-306-1990. Happy to put you in touch. Coachella Valley is a great place, great community. It's kind of a small town, not close, not too far away from the big towns is the way, the way we like to look at it. But you can give me a call at 800-306-1990.
800-306-1990. Be happy to put you in touch with Jessica Warren.